Oh, you made that tree mad. Oh, you just got smacked. <laughs> Fix your hair. <laughs> there ain't no fixing it today. I'm running like a week solid of bad hair day. Well, welcome back to Travels with Tommy and Lori. Today we're in Roswell. We're at Again. The, <laughs> we're at the Barrington Hall house. Wow, look at it. And I have to say, Bullock Hall was pretty impressive, but I think this one might be a little bit more impressive. I'm so excited to see it. The grounds are laid out a little bit more, you know, than Bullock yeah, was. It's more uh, botanical focused you know and, and i can't wait to go over there there's a looks like a garden trail i'm so excited we don't know we just got here so. yeah we literally just walked up tours don't start till one on sundays as everybody knows i work on saturday so yeah so we're down here on sunday we're gonna do the tour we're hoping we get the same tour guide we got it uh that would be so cool at the he other was, one he was really good so yeah he's he had a lot of information so that's what we're in it for yeah but um, so far, it's pretty cool. We just had parked on the side and walked around to the front to get a get a look at that. Can you imagine, you know, coming coming down this driveway and then all of a sudden you see... Ta-da! So, this is one of three, three yeah. of these historical mansions here. So I'm hoping we have an opportunity to do all three of them. So... Yeah. And then we'll pick which one we like the best so, so far, far though <laughs> like this gotta say yeah but we're gonna um wait till one o'clock and go inside and do the tour and that might be our tour guide right there maybe we'll have to see all right no nope, she's checking to see if it's locked she don't know neither so <laughs> we'll go check it out let you know we'll be back sheesh look at that lavender it makes my little bush look pathetic i gotta say from the start just based on grounds and landscaping. This one's uh, way prettier between the two. Just so far, and it smells awesome. It's been forever since I've run across roses that had that strong heirloom scent to them. Yeah, this place is gorgeous, at least from the outside. This is gonna smell glorious when it, all those blooms open up. I love lavender. That is a massive grapevine. I'm guessing in a couple of months, the sucker's gonna be loaded. This place is absolutely gorgeous. And they've got this winding trail of gardens that I'm about to walk down because I love flowers and plants. And I'm so excited to see. But I'm gonna tell y'all, true, this is my life goal is to have a backyard like this. I cannot wait. I could smell these before I even turn the corner. So beautiful. They, I imagine this is uh, got to be one of the best smells on earth. It's a nice sitting area that I'm about to go explore. It's just beautiful. And you can do an audio tour if you choose. And their audio tours are pretty comprehensive. They got about every breed of lavender, I think. So Tommy's out flying his drone. So I thought I'd sit for a minute in this garden. Look at it. You can hear the birds. Anybody ever ask me what my idea of what heaven would look like, this is it. Lay me here.
Oh, there's a bee right by my ear. <laughs> I'm getting accosted. It's a wasp. Nope. I'm generally not scared of bees, like at all, but I am scared of red wasps. Those things, pretty sure they're like reincarnated souls of the dredges of society and they're just angry. I don't know why they're angry, they're just mad. But anyway, what I was gonna say is, I don't know who maintains this. State of Georgia, Roswell Historical Society, Roswell Garden Club, I don't know. Thank you. This is so beautiful. It is so incredibly beautiful that I would have come up just to see this. And I was wrong. This is not a grape tree. It is a, what Tommy? It is a uh, hydrangea. It is a oak leaf hydrangea. And it is uh, 1846, I think is when this was Whoa, planted. 1846, that sucker's old. Dang. So, yeah, yeah I, I was wrong. It was neither. It's beautiful though. First, I thought it was a big fig tree. Yeah, Tommy thought it was figs. I said grapes, so we were both wrong. I drain you. See the wave in the wind? Yep, that's how you know it's really old. Cool. I would literally live on this porch. <laughs> Some people call it a virus. I call it one of the prettiest plants. I love wisteria, and it's one of the things I love about Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> again, this makes my rosemary that I'm very proud of, her name is Shirley, look uh, pathetic. Now, this is wow. Yeah, that is, that is a fig tree. <laughs> We've got a... Do what? I don't know what this is. Fig. Yeah, fig, fig right here. Oh, fig. This, fig. we have this growing in our yard. Oh, you're welcome. That's what grows underneath the bay window. Yeah, it's a wild deal. That's not wild deal. I think it's some type of horsetail fern, or something like that. It's actually closer to the uh, fungi mushroom family. Tommy just said this mansion is a lot better laid out, and he's right. Yeah, the yard over here, we didn't really have a whole lot of this. No, there wasn't a terrible lot. I mean, it was beautiful, yeah. but there wasn't a lot of uh, landscape. And man, I can't get over that lavender. Give me a dig it. No. Wish we could take cutting off one of those rose bushes, though. No. <laughs> I know. Probably go to jail for that. Are these things on the ground. Let me see. Come out of this tree. Anybody know what this tree is? Yeah, if anybody knows, let us know. When I lived in Texas, we had one of these um, beside the house where we lived. And I remember somebody telling me it was a China berry tree, but I don't know. Yeah. And I've never seen one since until now. Is it a blackberry tree? It can't be a blackberry uh -huh. tree. Don't tell me it can't be. Shit, it kind of does, don't it? <laughs> Look how big this thing is. What is it? I don't know. I don't I'll tell you, it's beautiful. Hey, I'll use my plant ID. Why don't you do that? That's a great idea, Tommy. You should have thought of that. I'll be back. Millions. So we figured it out. It is a red mulberry tree. That is cool. And coincidentally, when we buy candles or whatever, that's usually the scent we go for because we both love the smell of mulberry, which our friend Hetty calls it rotting corpse for some reason. But anyway, that is a red mulberry tree. And now we've decided, along with the Quans and cherry, we want that too. Well, hopefully they won't kill you. It's like a black and sweet one. Really? <laughs> I'm getting accosted by the tree. Oh, you made that tree mad. Oh, you just got smacked. <laughs> that tree, it's like the Wizard of Oz. So we're standing here at a tree, still picking berries off and eating them. They are so good. It is like a very, very sweet blackberry. It is so good. Hmm. What I found? A blue jay feather. It's a sign. We've been having a blue jay show up and get very close to us at the house. Barrington Hall. I'm a volunteer area 
is the um, staff person, I give the fun stuff, area that's the boring stuff. The administration, 1021, we go back to 1765 in Windsor, Connecticut, and that's where Roswell King was born. The city of Roswell is named after him. He came through this area in 1828. He was originally from Connecticut, moved to the coastal area of Georgia. He was a successful businessman. He was also an overseer of Pierce Butler's plantation. Most important for us, he was one of the major shareholders and on the board of directors of the Bank of Darien. And at that time, this would be the late 1820s, the Bank of Darien was probably the largest commercial bank south of Charleston. Uh, he comes through this at the bank's request because they're interested in the gold fields in Dahlonega, Georgia, which was America's first gold rush. Uh, but Barrett doesn't forget what he saw here. So he comes, or Roswell rather, doesn't forget what he saw here. So he comes back, we don't know exactly when, 1835 maybe, 1836, ready to build a cotton mill using the free power supply from the mill, from the stream, from Big Creek. But he doesn't want to be here by himself. So not only does he bring his uh, workers, his skilled tradesmen, enslaved tradesmen, um, their hangers on, but he also convinces six other families to know who, he knows who the business or marriage to move here. He convinces Major Stephen Bullock and his wife Martha to move here, and they move from Savannah. And they come here, it's what, 1837, I think they started their house in 1830, it was finished in 1840. Bullock Hall, which is also owned by the city of Roswell. And had 12 children, which wasn't unusual. Um, 12 might have been a bit of a problem, but you know, eight, nine, ten is very common. And nine reached out of their three died as young children were buried here in the Roswell Presbyterian Cemetery along with their parents. Uh, many of their younger siblings, um, their older siblings, rather. Um, all the furniture in this room did belong to Barrington and Catherine. And one of the reasons we have them was in early May 1864, when it was common knowledge federal troops were coming this way and they were not going to be stopped. The war had been going very badly for the Confederacy for what, 18 months. It was getting worse. So uh, they were not going to be stopped in Roswell. Roswell didn't have any real military value. The Roswell militia withdrew over the Chattanooga River, which is the big area right here. Um, as soon as they knew for sure that the federal troops were on the way, and there was only 75 on there, so there was 30,000 federal troops came through there. And he was a graduate of the University of Georgia. His wife was Anna Habersham King, and right here, and she came from a wealthy Savannah family. And the Habersham name is all over Georgia, including mm -hmm. Habersham County. And her, her grandfather was a, uh, a hero of the uh, Revolutionary War. If you can read it for me, if it's easy enough for you to read. Uh, we'll see. Your father has been seriously injured by a kick from his horse, come immediately. <laughs> D.A., I can't tell what that is. We do not know who that is. We've never, we're, it's like Adams, D.A. Adams? Yeah, Adams, I think at first they thought he was like no manager, but they looked through the records, the employment records, and they couldn't find anybody named Adams. Huh. This room we gave to Eva King Baker, who was the only King Dodger in the Chapel. She had eight older brothers that reached out, but she was the youngest, the only girl. This is, I think, the nicest room in the house, especially on a bright sunny day. How is it being decided this is going to be her bedroom? And she was married at the age of 19 in 1856, downstairs, to her husband, the Reverend William Baker, who was, of course, a Presbyterian minister. She wasn't going to marry a Baptist. And uh, <laughs> married by her uncle, the Reverend Proud, even though her brother and her husband were both ordained Presbyterian ministers. And almost immediately, they moved to um, California, where he had accepted the position because he was looking for a congregation as a pastor at the Presbyterian Church in Sacramento. They stayed for a year, maybe a little bit longer. And George was originally from Utica, New York, moved here as a young man at the request of his cousin, who was the mill manager. Uh, his name was Henry Merrill. Henry wrote his much younger cousin, George, and Utica said, you're a very smart young man. You have an excellent education. He was a college graduate, which is very unusual. Why don't you move to Georgia, bring your wife, Lucretia, with you, and uh, we'll, we'll teach you the mill business downtown. So he comes down here, brings his wife, and she dies in childbirth. I think it was mm -hmm. 1844. They got here in 1843, something like that. And he does remarry. And I did a tour last week, which is the first one I've done in 14 months, and I couldn't for the life of me remember this woman's name. I just got on me from now on. The lady on the right, her name is Jane Allen. She came from a very wealthy Savannah family. And there's the George right there, his portrait. Now, my 
my sister and my sister-in-law. No, my sister and my wife. I think he's cute. <laughs> wonder about how somebody could fall over here and look for it. Like, yeah, fairly hip. <laughs> it's beautiful though. He said that was original. This is original. Man, look at these floors. And we're going to the right front room of the house. Okay. Come to our rooms and wander up. Are these the original floors in here? This is, uh, the original floor is under it, hard to find. This is cloth. This is what wealthy people would have used in the front foyer of the house. Uh, I could have turned this actually probably right after the 1920s or 30s because back then there was no painting. So when your guests and your family came through the front door, who knows what the heaven was? Yeah, Which true. Horse poop, doggy do, mud. And you didn't want the floors to be ruined. Right. So you put this on, on top of the right, because it's cloth and it can be damp. It's very easy it's to keep clean. So it was very popular. Welcome to the King's Drawing Room. That's what actually Barry could call this his uh, the formal parlor. Everybody else was in the drawing room. This is where they would have been in formally because this was for church people, business people, and just people they knew who weren't quite that. The, um, the grandfather thought was donated to us, and you can see there's no way to The case was a wedding gift for Barry and Catherine built this portion over the fireplace, James Rossum came. He was not a clergyman, it looks like a clergyman. Just fashion. Yeah. He was president of the mail. His dad died in 1866. George Camp was president in 1900. And then uh, the board of directors elected uh, James Rosen. He died in 1872 in Atlanta. He was 70 years old. That is spectacular. The actually is not 18. It's 2002, 2000. <laughs> it's still beautiful. Yeah, Sarah bought it and she said, as soon as it's done, she thinks it's too big for this remote power. I love and it. And she said it would not suit me. So she donated. <laughs> when half the people that come through here say, I agree with it, Yeah, I love it. The original dining room furniture, we got those two. And this end is the original King Dining room furniture. All righty then. Well, we just finished our tour. Tip number one, bring cash. Yes. It's a lot easier to do cash than it is to the card because it's just, it just is. It's uh, $5 a person. Yep. Can't beat the price. Kids under 13 are free. We did the uh, guided tour, so we got all the information that I think we could ever, ever he was have. So thorough. I don't know how in the world he remembered all the dates, all the names. I mean, I, it was, he, he was very thorough. Yep. Worth every bit of the five bucks. That is really nice. It's, um, it's, it's, every door in there is original from the time, yeah, and it's original to the house. A lot of the furnishings are original to the family. It might not be in this house, but a lot of them are to the family or to the house, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, they actually have the original chair where Roswell King died, died in. Died. So that's pretty cool. You cannot go into the kitchen, and the reason why that is the only part of the house that's been 100% modernized. So that's the only part that's not of it open to the tours, which was a little bit disappointing, but I don't want to see a modern kitchen. No. So, I mean, I can go to my mom's that's, and say that. That's why we don't know. Yeah. That's why I don't make us in here. So. Yeah. So. But, yeah, another great uh, tour of an old historic part of uh, downtown Which Russell. one do you like better? Who? I like the grounds here, yeah. but the other house. That's, yeah, I'm going to have to agree <laughs> with you on that. The both tour guides, though. Fantastic. Yep. So, so, yeah, you get plenty of information. You get, ask any questions you want yep. to. So, can't beat it. 10 out of 10. This was the barn, and this is what the barn looks like now. I would say that's a beautiful restoration job. And he was telling us that some of the uh, more modern owners had divided up and uh boarded people so and he didn't mention this as being one of them but maybe that's why this is so restored maybe they restored it and rented it out but it's gorgeous yeah see if i can see inside the windows and you can't it's a doubled entryway and all the uh windows and stuff are blacked out so i don't know 
what's up with that. And this was the smokehouse. I love the sign. Keep out, you'll just get dirty. And jokes on y'all, I don't mind getting dirty. But this is really cool. My uncle used to have a smokehouse and he was all the time having to run us out of there as kids because we liked to play in it. I like to have that cauldron, that's nice. Chicken and Marietta, if you've ever heard about that. It's just a KFC. I was so disappointed the first time I saw it. So disappointed. So you know, Lady in Black. I talked Tommy into We're in another cemetery. Surprise. Hey, surprise, but this one's got surprise. some cool stuff. Lady in Black. Gotta check that out. Um, Mary Fagan. Shall I tell you about that in a minute? But this cemetery is founded in 1831, right? What was that? 1831. Here's another mulberry tree. <laughs> Tommy's like, never seen one until today, and now we're seeing them everywhere. That's pretty, that's a old tree too. So that dude's kind of cool, just from my standpoint, because I used to be a journalist and he was the first head of the School of Journalism in 1921. That's kind of neat. <laughs> There's Tommy. Oh. How big that tree was. Good Lord. <laughs> something made a bird. Aw, oh, man. Well, I guess this was the right place to do it. Holy smokes. That was a big... Big tree. Wonder if that one is an offshoot of it. Oh, look at this lady. Oh, I love her. She reminds me of the bird lady a little bit from Mary Poppins. <laughs> Feed the birds. What are you doing? <laughs> What's your sign? What are you looking at? She's looking at heaven, Tommy. A long way over there. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is her memorial. Maddie Harris Lyon, 97, the mother of Marietta, known for her years of zealous and affectionate service in religious, civic, civic welfare, and patriotic civil, activities. Civil. Hey, I understand this. Let me die working, still tackling plans unfinished and undone. Clean to its end, may my race be run. No lagging steps, no faltering, shrinking. Let me die working. 
she looked like a sweetheart. Tommy was ready to eat lunch and I convinced him to come here. <laughs> Tommy made a discovery. What'd you find? The oldest. The oldest grave here? Yeah. And there's a penny down there. You know I want it. <laughs> Tommy collects pre-1982 pennies. This windy out here, but I heard about this cemetery and the murder of little Mary Fagan from a guy who's on one of the Facebook pages that I'm on. Got cemeteries, and um, he has a YouTube channel also. He's under Jarrett Derryberry on YouTube. He does uh, old cemeteries and stuff, and we struck up a conversation because I told him I was coming to this one because I loved his video so much, and uh, that I would let the world know that he does if this is your kind of thing he does a great job and he does a good backstory on his stuff too so thanks Jarrett so this is a little bit of a sad story so Mary Ann here she died in 1906 her sister Lucy um, well Mary Ann and Lucy were both musicians and after Marianne died, Lucy would travel on foot most of the time to her sister's grave quite often. I think the sign said uh, twice weekly for 48 years. And she would wear full mourning clothes. So she was known throughout Atlanta as the lady in black. That's pretty interesting and kind of sad and sweet at the same time. But, see, it's a beautiful monument. Well, of course, Tommy found the grave that I actually came here to see. So, we have to give him credit for that, I guess. <laughs> so, this is Mary Fagan's memorial. And it's got... I'll take a picture because there's no way I'm going to try to read this right now. And then there is a plaque with her picture. <laughs> Picture this, April, 1913. 13 year old little girl worked at the National Pencil Factory in Atlanta. She went to go collect her wages. And the next morning, her body was discovered. This is my story. <laughs> and it was really sad, two parts of it might or potentially sad. One, you know, she was sexually assaulted and murdered. Two, her boss was the one who was tried and convicted and apparently his trial was huge and very uh, hyped up. So he was sentenced to hang, but he was granted later on a, the uh, his sentence was commuted to life. Not having any of that, a mob broke into the prison where he was held and lynched him. Then later on, after he was dead, it was too late to do anything about that, they discovered that he might have been framed. And in 1986, he was granted a posthumous pardon from the state of Georgia. So, poor Leo Frank, Mary Fagan's boss, may not have done the deed after all. Although there is some speculation that he did not, he did it, but he did not act alone, that he had some other dude. I think his name was Otto. I can't remember. But anyway, it's a really sad story. This tells the story. And this was her mother. Let's see if somebody left a little gift there for her. It's just sad. There's another wasp. Back on up, buddy. So we saw what we came here to see and found a few other little bonus things. So now we are going to go find some lunch. Well, all right. Well, all right. <laughs> so we stopped at Wendy's and got lunch. If you like Wendy's, it was pretty good. I got the... Uh, bacon bacon pub burger and Tommy got the jalapeno popper chicken then 
We went into Barrington Hall. Yes, and um, I'll tell you, we got one more to go on the this uh, historic tour that we yes. got there. Um, the 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 grounds there were fantastic. They were amazing. Barrington Hall was built by Barrington King and his father Roswell King, who founded the colony of Roswell, Georgia. Um, the family held the place until or for 160 years, and then it was passed down into non-family members for several years until the early, uh, early mid 2000s. Yeah, where then it became property of the city of Roswell. Right. I don't know who does these gardens, but they <laughs> were spectacular. Well, a lot of the gardens, from what I understood, were started back in the 1800s. Yes, the roses. They are heirloom roses. They were started back in the 1800s. So they still have that really deep, fragrant... You smell that through the whole property. You could smell the, the gardens, the lavender, the... the I roses, literally believe, everything. I literally believe that they had every variety of lavender known to North America. Yeah, it, the, the, the grounds were beautiful. And then the, uh, the house itself, what really got me with it, probably because I'm a dude, was all the original stuff that was in there, especially yeah. all the original doors and a lot of the original furniture was still in the house. Right. You don't get a whole lot of that anymore because... Most of it's replicas. Right. As they moved on, they took their properties with them, but the properties or the, the furnishings that were passed down from family to family stayed in the house, which is awesome. A lot of them willed them to them too. So right. after even after the city of Roswell took possession of the house, you had people through the King family line that was leaving furniture in their wills to the city of Roswell to put back into the house. Back into the house, yeah. which I thought was really cool. Yeah, the the house was was awesome. Don't don't get me wrong there, but I love the original floors, the original doors, the original furniture. Right. A lot of the letters and stuff that were you know on display was you know correspondence back and forth through family members, which I think was why because when we went to Bulacal, we were pretty much allowed to to do our own tour. Right. And on this one, we were not. And I think maybe because this one had more of the letters and stuff just laying around. Right, right. So I guess they had to be more careful with who they, you know, how they allow the tours to be conducted. The cemetery, though, that oh, yeah. was a cool cemetery. The cemeteries in uh, Marietta, which is only about, from there, it's about 25 to 30 minutes. But... It was huge. We didn't even make it all the way through. No, no. We just hit the highlights, like the Lady in Black, which I don't know. I have siblings, and I have one that passed. So the story there of Mary and her sister Lucy kind of hit me because Lucy traveled, you know. From Atlanta to Marietta by foot. For 48 years, <laughs> dressed in full morning gear. Yep. And then the story of Mary Fagan, too. I mean... That was one of the main reasons why we went there was for Mary Fagan. It was it was terrible. That was that was extremely tragic. But then you happen up on things like this with uh, Maddie Lyons, you know, and you find out that she was one of the pillars of Marietta back yep. in the day, and yep. it was just you know, it was really neat to see. And I think you can tell by my <laughs> <laughs> the way that I said, "Oh, look, there's a lady." <laughs> how I felt about that, but. Yeah, it was just all altogether a really cool trip. Yep. Hands like down, said, recommend it. We got one more, and hopefully y'all enjoy this one as much as you did the last one. Yep. And we'll definitely uh, get back down there and do the, the last one, and it's all the original families of Roswell, mm -hmm. Georgia. I don't know where I don't know where they find their guides at, but so far we've done two. Great, Both guides have been guides, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> And for five bucks to, to tour it, you really can't beat that. So Take cash. Yeah, take cash with you. <laughs> but don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you know when we upload new videos. Till next time. Bye-bye. Stay, Stay spicy. spicy.